Hi, this is Judy from Clothing Patterns 101, and welcome to another video newsletter. Today, we are going to be talking about sewing gifts. With the um, gift-giving holidays coming up, and most notably Christmas, of course, but there are so many other opportunities to uh, uh, give gifts, um, especially at this time of year. You may have a friend or family member that you want to give a gift to, who somebody who sews, um, or maybe you want to give a gift to yourself. That's perfectly fine. We won't tell. So I just wanted to um, go through some things that uh, either items that I have received as gifts and enjoyed or things that I would give as gifts. And the reason I'm doing this right now also is because next week on Tuesday, October 13th is Amazon Prime Day. And a lot of these things uh, or similar items are available on Amazon Prime. So it'd be uh, an excellent opportunity to save some money on some of your gifts as well. So this is not, uh, these are sewing gifts. This is not uh, related to pattern making. Uh, of course, the site is mostly about pattern making, but I assume that you also sew or that you may know somebody who sews. And um, it's it's nice to give a little gift once in a while. That's uh, This is an opportunity to give someone something that is, or give yourself something that is just a little bit nicer than what you usually have. There are utilitarian items that we use all the time in sewing. But this is a chance to give something that's either just a slightly better quality, let somebody move up a, a step in terms of the quality of the um, uh, the products that they use, the tools that they use, or simply to um, something that's fun, something that's more decorative, prettier, more fun than what you ordinarily see or would use on a daily basis. So I'm going to start with scissors or shears. I think there's a difference between the two. Um, I think it has to do with the length of the uh, of the blade, but I'm not sure. Now this is just a, a utility scissors. These are the super cheap kind that you find usually in the office supply section of a store, of, you know, discount store or whatever. These are fine for paper and you should have some for cutting patterns. This is not a gift. This would be uh, the fabric version of that with a plastic handle. These are the Fiskars. Uh, they're good scissors. They are very good scissors. They're probably what you bought yourself when you first started sewing. Uh, they're a little bit less expensive than the stainless steel scissors. And this is actually what I would recommend when you're first starting out. You don't know how much you're going to enjoy this, how much you're going to have time to do. So I wouldn't invest in really expensive scissors starting out. I would do something with a good quality scissors that isn't that expensive. And that would be something like this. But if you want to upgrade or if you want to help somebody else upgrade as a gift, get a nice pair of stainless steel scissors. These last longer. The sharpness of the blade, the blade stays sharper longer. It has a nice clean cut and they can be resharpened. These can be resharpened also, but there's a shorter lifespan. They get dull faster. You're sharpening them more often and eventually you just can't sharpen them anymore. That's really true of any scissors, but these, hold their sharpness much longer. You don't have to sharpen them as often. You don't need to sharpen as much and they last literally forever if you if you take care of them. These are Gingers. Gingers is like the brand for sewing scissors, but there are others as well. Um, I will have links on the page that goes along with this newsletter. Rather than putting them all in the newsletter itself, I will put a link to a page on my site that lists a lot of um, similar items and the gingers will be on there as well as a couple of other sewing brands uh, but a good pair of stainless steel scissors is a very nice gift because it's the kind of thing that you won't necessarily buy for yourself or at least not routinely so it's a gift to yourself it's a gift to someone else and always use the uh, sheath that comes with it to protect them Along with those scissors, you also need some kind of nipper, uh, thread nipper, as you're sewing. There are little nippers that you can use. I don't like them very much. I use a small pair of scissors. These are really embroidery scissors. They're nice and sharp. They cut threads cleanly, which is important. If you're trying to thread a needle and you've got a ragged edge, you have to clip off that edge to have a nice clean uh, and to put through the needle. If you have a dull scissors, you get just keep getting a ragged end. So a nice, sharp pair of scissors with a good point, good for clipping corners or clipping curves in the, in the seam allowance. Um, 
I much prefer this to a pair of nippers. But again, these are the utilitarian type. Fiskars makes a nice, um, a nice one. I don't know. This actually is Fiskars. It's not orange, but it is Fiskars. But if you want to upgrade for a gift, the stork scissors. These are just very pretty. They're classic. Um, these are embroidery scissors, but then so is this. So if you do hand sewing, uh, this is good. I, I actually bought this for, because I do like to embroider. These are my embroidery scissors, but you could also use them as nippers. They are a very, very nice pair of scissors uh, and very pretty, very classic. This says you're a seamstress when you have your stork scissors. And these are also gingers. So again, they're not cheap. You can find some cheap ones, but they don't cut well. So if you want to buy something that actually cuts, that's actually useful, go for the gingers or a similar brand. They are really pretty. They are a classic style and um, they're good quality. Again, it has a sheath. Always use the sheath to protect your scissors. So the Ginger scissors and the Ginger embroidery scissors are two things I think would be excellent gifts. Now you also need pins and needles, obviously. I'm sure you're familiar with classic tomato pin cushion. Uh, these are very handy to have. Uh, uh, you can get other things, magnetic pin trays and so forth. I like those as well. But for a pin cushion, this is sort of the classic. And it's somewhat decorative, but it's also very ordinary. This is one, and it's a mess because I've had this for years, but this is one somebody gave me, and I love it. It's huge, um, but I like the little, it's, it's of an oriental, just sort of Chinese style with all these little guys hanging on to the edge. Uh, you can see I've loved it to death because a lot of them are missing their, their little pigtails, but um, this is a really handy uh, pin cushion. I have pins, needles, safety pins, everything in here. I actually do not recommend putting needles in a pin cushion. I do it out of habit. It's a bad habit to have. Uh, but I always keep a piece of thread in the needle because if you take the thread out, you're going to lose that needle. You can't tell the difference between a needle and one of these smaller silk pins. And um, they get, just get lost very easily. They can get pushed all the way into the pin cushion. It's really just not a good idea. But here is a nice pin cushion. And this is one I did find on Amazon that I just love. It's a little hedgehog. Once you put the pins in, you got all his little, all his little uh, spiky, um, all his little spikes on his back. And it's just cute. I mean, it's just a pin cushion, but it's really cute. So this is one of those little grab bag or stocking stuffer gifts. It's just a really cute little pin cushion. Handy, but still. It's cute. Why not do cute if you can? For needles, there are needle cases. This is a very pretty metal one. Now you'll see I have actually these things on a ribbon. You can put it around your neck. For hand sewing, it's handy to have this on a ribbon around your neck and then you can pull out your, your scissors as you need them and find your needles. Again, mostly for embroidery but um, any hand sewing, that's good. This, you twist off the top, and there are your needles. This is a very pretty needle case. Kind of uh, Victorian-esque. It looks kind of Victorian. And it probably is reminiscent of something that would have been used around that time. A very pretty needle case. Uh, you should keep your needles in something like this rather than in a, in a pin cushion. As I said, the, pin, the needles, uh, especially if you don't have a thread through the eye, the needles can get lost in a pin cushion. This keeps all your needles together and keeps them safe. But there's another one that I did find that I think is really cute. It's this little lipstick looking um, device. And it's, I just think it's, it's a really cute, very girly, obviously, but it's a cute little thing. This would be, again, a great little grab bag or stocking stuffer gift. You pull the top off, twist it up, and there are your needles. 
I believe it's marketed as a pin cushion, but um, it's great as a needle case because you can have all different sizes of needles in there. Uh, and because they are set into the cushion, you can tell the difference. If you just simply had a lot of sizes of needles in something like this, you'd be digging through all your needles to find them. I use that other kind of screw, uh, screw top case if I have a bunch of needles of a particular size, but this has a bunch of different sizes. It actually comes with the needles. So this is very handy as a needle case and very cute. And it keeps your needles uh, clean. It keeps them from getting rusty. Uh, it keeps them separate. It keeps them from getting lost, most importantly. And it's just fun to have. So this is one I would definitely use as a, um, as a little gift. Then, again, for hand sewing, you need a thimble. Not everybody uses a thimble, but I do. And of course, you're familiar with the ordinary thimble, metal thimble. Now, you can find really fun decorative thimbles that are totally useless. This is a cute little cow. I'm from Wisconsin. We have cows. So um, I bought this more as a souvenir. It's fun. It's cute. But it's not something that you would ever actually be able to use. It's not. It's not useful. I do collect thimbles when I travel, and so I like things like this, but it's not useful. Although, if you know someone who collects um, thimbles and, and enjoys traveling, you could find something that uh, that they might like. This one is one I got, bought. Um, I used to travel to Asia on, on business, and this is a cloisonne thimble with a panda on it. Actually, two pandas. Uh, and it does pretty much fit my finger and it is useful. It is, it's, it's a thimble. It's a little thick because of the cloisonne, but it is a useful thimble. So if you travel, that's something you might think of looking for, uh, for yourself or for friends. This is one my mother brought me after a trip to, um, Mexico. It's very long and skinny at the top. It would be good if you had a long fingernail. Um, but even if you don't, it is a useful thimble and it has a pretty kind of filigree edge and so forth. It's obviously very tarnished, but I kind of like the tarnish, but uh, this is this was a gift from my mother from a trip to Mexico. So thimbles are something that are useful and can also be decorative and um, again, a cute little gift. Tape measures are something you use. And of course you're accustomed to the yellow tape this one, I think, it, uh, has inches on both sides, but it does have centimeters on one side as well. Find these everywhere. But you can also get these retractable tape measures. And this one has a crocheted cover that's uh, an orange kitty, because I'm a cat lover. So somebody gave me this as a gift. It's handy. It's, it's not something I use a lot, but because of its size, it's something that I can carry in my purse. Um, I do use it when I'm when I'm shopping. I can measure things. I can measure clothing. I can measure the size of um, a frame. Uh, uh, I can measure the size of uh, something that I may bring into my house. I want to make sure it will fit in the in the space where I want to put it. So it's it's handy to have a tape measure. And this is it's just a cute version of it. And then you press the nose and it retracts. So these little retractable tape measures are available everywhere, but there are some cute versions, and I do have a link for a couple of those. And then you need a place to put all this stuff. So you need like a sewing box. Now this is my sewing box. And, and again, for hand, especially for hand sewing, when you need to sew on a button or do a, a quick repair, um, I use my, I keep my sewing box in my living room, actually on a shelf in my living room, and I grab it at any time I need to do some kind of repair. Um, I don't, I've had this so long, I honestly don't even know if it was designed as a sewing box or if I simply turned it into one. But since it has a quilted uh, little, it, it is lined in this uh, red silk-like fabric, it's probably poly, but um, it is lined and has a quilted, uh, lining on the top, which is a good place to put pins and needles. So I do think it was designed as a sewing box. 
it is just, it, it came just um, empty at the, at the bottom. I actually created some trays to go inside to keep things a little bit more organized. Not very, because I'm not very organized, but this is just cardstock covered with uh, fabric and hot glue. So, but they fit inside, inside the box. But I use, I have used this for probably 30 years and it, it is inval invaluable to me. I think everyone should have a sewing box, if only for those quick repairs. Scissors, needles, a couple spools of thread, maybe some extra generic buttons, shirt buttons, whatever, so that if you need to replace a button, you can do that. But just about anything can be a sewing box. This actually is one I use for some uh, beading or something. But um, just a decorative cardboard box works fine as a sewing box. These you can find certainly at Joanne Fabrics, probably Hobby Lobby, other, um, you know, sewing stores or um, craft stores, that kind of thing. They have so many of these these days. Again, it's just cardboard. This one does happen to have a latch so it opens it has a handle again it's just a big open box you would probably have to put um, smaller containers inside to keep things organized but it's pretty and it's functional very pretty little box that you can use for sewing you can use it for any number of things but it would make a great sewing box and of course sewing centers like Joann's have actual sewing boxes but you can use a lot of different things. And I think the actual sewing boxes are quite often boring. <laughs> so I like some of these others better. This one is another one I have laying around my living room. This actually was um, a handbag back in, I think probably eighties or nineties, these wicker handbags were, were popular. And obviously they're very rigid, which is why I don't find them all that useful as a handbag, but it's a very nice, very small sewing box. And again, it's just open. It does have a lining, so you can use it for needles. And if you wanted to make a really nice gift, especially for someone just starting out, you can find a, a box or a handbag or some kind of little box with a cover and a handle, preferably, even at a thrift store, but then fill it with all the goodies. You can stick in the, the scissors and the tape measure and a pin cushion and a needle case, and a thimble, and the scissors. I'm gonna put in these because they're not attached. And you can fit all of that into your sewing box, and that's a nice gift. So for a friend, or maybe your daughter is just starting to sew and needs some tools and supplies, you can go and buy an inexpensive but cute container and fill it with the items that she needs, and you have a handy little sewing box. And then there are the things that are not really practical but are simply sewing related. This is just a little clock. It's a sewing machine, you know, a clock in the, in the shape of a sewing machine. It's kind of a silly little item, but my nephews gave this to me a few years ago, and it does function as a clock, and I do have it near my sewing machine because I don't have any other clock. So it's handy. It's very handy to have and it's cute. And actually I brought this to work one time, uh, one place where I was working and um, everyone loved it. So a little item like that can be a nice gift for a sewing person. This is a book my sister gave me It's called Pattern Behavior. It really is, um, it's actually a book of uh, well, they're not actually cartoons. They're pictures from vintage patterns, but then the person who wrote the book came up with a caption for each picture, and it's kind of funny, so it's kind of like cartoons, but, um, but they're using vintage patterns and then adding a caption and sort of making up what are these people actually doing and what are they saying. So um, it is amusing, but it's a cute little sewing gift again, or a gift for someone who sews. Not a practical item, but a nice gift for someone who sews. And finally, if you really want to 
go all out, you could simply buy a machine. Um, I'm not going to pull out my sewing machines, but I did actually buy my sewing machine on Amazon. But the, and I know that at uh, Amazon Prime Day, they always have sewing machines and sergers available. So if you are in the market, whether it's for a gift or for yourself, if you are in the market, take a look next week. Um, October 13th, Tuesday is Amazon Prime Day and they will have sewing machines. The items that I have links to on my page, um, I can't guarantee they're going to be on sale during Amazon Prime. I have no idea what's going to be on sale. And the items that I've shown you are more a way of giving you an idea of some things that you can um, buy for a friend or a family member as a gift that is sewing related. I'm not saying buy this particular item or this particular thimble. I'm just saying that these are some ideas and you might find something similar, whether it's on Amazon, at Joanne Fabrics, at a local thrift store. Um, you can find some cool things. So uh, just giving you some ideas of things that you can uh, give to a loved one who sews, whether it's a grab bag or stocking st stuffer or a big ticket sewing machine. There are all kinds of gifts that say, I recognize that you sew, I respect that you sew, I like that you sew, and here's something to help you. So those are some ideas, uh, just to kind of get your mind thinking that way. And uh, treat yourself as well. Happy holidays.